press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Okay, the task I've been given is to create a play button for a media player. We all have a pretty good idea of what a play button looks like. But for starters, I'm going to create a button. And I'm going to edit the template of the button. Controls have a template which contains all of the geometry that's involved in the button, as well as all of the interactions that are built into a button. Let's go ahead and edit the template of the button by right-clicking on the button and choose Edit Control Parts. I could create an empty template, in which case I could specify all of the states myself, but I'm going to edit a copy of the button so I have somewhere to start. When I choose Edit a Copy, the resource dialog comes up, just like we saw before. In this case, however, I'm going to be handing this style off to another teammate, so I'm going to define it in a resource dictionary. I'm going to click the New button, and I need to give my resource dictionary a name. This is going to be my Play button, so I'm just going to name it PlayButton.xaml. Now I've got selected my resource dictionary, and I want to name my resource appropriately, so I'm going to call it PlayStyle. Okay. If we look at the object tree, it's changed a bit. Now this is indicating that I'm modifying a button template, and this particular template is titled PlayStyle. I have the template, which has in it a Chrome and a content presenter. The content presenter is the small piece of text in a button that displays where the text is going to be. The content presenter also recognizes that if its content is, say, an image, it will display the image appropriately. Now the Chrome is a particular control defined by the Windows Presentation Framework that really doesn't have a whole lot in it that I can modify. So I'm going to just delete the Chrome, but since the Content Presenter is a child of it, it's going to disappear as well. So at this point, I have effectively an empty template. Now a template is only allowed to have one child. So I'm going to use a Layout Manager, in this case a grid, so I can place everything else into it. I'm going to double-click my grid to make it the activated element. Now, so long as the grid has the yellow border around it in the object tree, every element that I create from this point forward will be created as a child of the grid. You'll notice that I didn't drag out the grid like I have before. In a situation like this where you're editing a template, just double-clicking the grid tool in the toolbar will create a grid for you of the default size, in this case, taking up the entire grid. Now I want to add a rectangle. I'm going to double-click the rectangle. The rectangle comes in at its default size, but I want to take up the entire grid. So I'm going to move over and just drag the corner of it down. Now the snap lines that we were talking about earlier, this time they're trying to give me a padding, but I don't actually want that padding. Instead of turning off snap lines, I'm just going to hold down the S key to disable them for the moment. And now I can drag the rectangle to the size that I want. I've got a rough idea of how I want my button to look, so I'm going to start by rounding my corners a bit and I'm going to go into the Properties Inspector and modify a few properties. I'm going to increase the stroke thickness to 4, and then give it a solid dark red stroke. Now I'm going to change the Fill to a Linear Gradient, and using the Brush Transform tool, rotate it so I have a gradient going from top to bottom. I can hold down the Shift key to force rotation to go to even 15 degree intervals so I can get it going perfectly up and down. Now I want to edit the gradient stops to be kind of a dark red to a bit lighter red. I want to add a bit of a shine, so I'm going to add an extra rectangle. And this time I'm also going to hold down the S key so my snapping doesn't get in my way again. Make it a bit taller and remove the stroke. Then I'm going to set the fill to a solid white and make it partially transparent. Now a play button traditionally has a triangle on it, but we don't have a triangle tool, so I'm going to create a rectangle. I want it to be square, so as I'm dragging it out, I'm going to hold down the shift key to force my rectangle to have the same width and height. I don't want my corners to be rounded, and I'm going to go to the Object menu and convert my rectangle to a path. A rectangle has specified properties. It's square, it has a width, it has a height, it has four right angles. A path is just an arbitrary piece of geometry, 
so I can use the direct selection tool to modify the geometry. I'm going to select this point and press the delete key to delete it. Now my rectangle has become a triangle that I can rotate to get into the right position. Rotation can only be done with the selection tool and put it where I want it. Like rotating the gradient, I can hold down the shift key to force my rotation to exact 15 degree intervals. Go ahead and move it over a little bit. Give it a solid stroke. And let's make it white. And give it a solid, somewhat orangish fill. Now I've gone ahead and created all the geometry for my button. So let's take a look at what it looks like. I'm going to press the scope up button this will move the scope of my application from modifying my play button back to my application. Now the play button on my artboard looks like what I created. And when I press F5, my application starts up and I have my button. However, this button has no interactivity whatsoever. Clicking on it does nothing. There's no mouse rollover effect. We need to add all of those. So I'm going to close this window and I'm going to go back to my play button, right click on it, choose Edit Control Parts, and I'm going to edit the template. This option was grayed out before because the button was using the default template, but now since I've explicitly defined a template, I can edit template to return to this mode. Now I'm going to add a property trigger. 